Good morning, guys. Unfortunately, this is one of the last days that I'll be spending here in Italy. So I got up early. I haven't been getting up early too much. And I'm having my morning coffee here on the balcony. It's such a pristine, such a beautiful view. Right in front of me is the Maella Mountain. To my right is the Gran Sasso Mountain Range. And if you actually look over way to the left, you can kind of see the Adriatic Sea. I wanted to make this video to kind of show you guys what it's like in the less touristy side of Italy. So I'll be going to a couple villages today, showing you guys around what it's like and what a difference it can be from going to places like Rome and the Amalfi Coast to places like Abruzzo here where there's little to no tourists and you get a far more authentic side of Italy. Just finished my coffee, but I'm not done with my coffee fix. So we're gonna head into the village, grab some coffee and explore a little bit. come to Rico's bar for some breakfast. Well, it's more so Italians, their definition of breakfast is a little different than in North America. You're not gonna get your traditional bacon and eggs. So we have more of a typical spread for breakfast. Instead, we have like a croissant here. And usually they're cream filled. They really like their sweets in the morning. I'm not really a huge fan of that, but so we just got kind of the plain ones for breakfast. You see this pastry here is a little more typical of Italy they'll have kind of really sweet little pastries for breakfast instead of like a hearty kind of bacon and eggs like we would have in Canada. If you want to blend in more with the locals, the first thing you're going to have to do is pronounce, it's not actually cappuccino, it's cappuccino, right? Cappuccino. So if you say that, you'll stick in uh, a little bit more with the locals. And if you want two cappuccinos, cappuccinos, it's cappuccino, is it due? Cappuccini. But to note, even like the plain ones here, they have like sugar on top, so there is gonna be some sweetness in it too. But definitely get a cappuccino. Cappuccino. They're really, really good in Italy. If you order this in the afternoon or in the evening, they look at you kind of funny. They might not even make one for you. It's definitely a morning drink for them. Five yeah, five order it before 11 a.m., right? What are these called? Mamba. Like a puff pastry, pretty much. With cream in it. It's not bad, but it's not something I'd want for breakfast. I could get my very own Speedo. Do you think those are men's or women's? I probably could wear this and they wouldn't say anything. That's just how it is in Europe. So we were pretty lucky. It ended up being the day that they do the market. So every Thursday in Loreto a Prutino, they do do a market. I don't know, I'm not a huge shopper, that's not why I travel. Like, we kind of just quickly browse through. We've been to a few of these markets before and it's generally, typically kind of the same thing. Now we're walking up, we're gonna walk up to the top of Loreto and show you there's an incredible 360 view you'll see of the whole city. It is cool, like a small village like this, there's just some of these little churches all over the place. It's about five churches. This is also a really, really good time to be exploring the village because there's nobody around. Everybody's at the market right now, so we kind of have it to ourselves. Pretty amazing with the church and just the silhouette of the Mala Mountains right behind it. Prepare to get your steps in, because Europe is all walking and it's all incline. It's just a straight incline up to the top of this, this village here. So you're definitely going to be able to burn off all that pasta. Are these like old Roman ruins? That they just have on display out in the open. Pretty cool because most places these would be like caged up, right? Yeah. They'd be in cases. There's so much charm to this city, like everywhere you look there's something beautiful, like it's an opportunity to do a photo shoot basically anywhere around here. Pretty cool place for a bed and breakfast. This used to be the most famous hotel in Loreto, but it was, uh, it became a victim of uh, COVID, it's closed down now. 
There's so much beauty in this town. Like my dad was saying that they're almost, the locals here are almost desensitized to it. They're just so used to it. Like you see just these beautiful old buildings and then right, right in the background is the Grand Sasso Mountain. Look, they have the just a pig's head just sitting in there. <laughs> oh my god. So we just grabbed some pocetta sandwiches for lunch. A really, really popular thing here. I don't know if it's Abruzzian or if it's popular everywhere in Italy. But essentially what it is is just it's pork on a bun. You'd think it would be really, really dry, but it's actually quite good because I think they put a lot of fat on it. So it really doesn't need any sort of sauce or anything. It's so freaking good. And it was about, what was it, 7 euros for two of them. All right, so we've had our fill of Loretto Aprutino. We're gonna head to another little village. So we got a little bit sidetracked. My dad wanted to stop by this lake, but it was definitely well worth it. Di Penne, truly beautiful. This is the archway going into the entrance of Penne. Welcome to the beautiful little village of Penne. I know exactly what you're thinking, and no, they did not invent Penne pasta here. I double checked because I wasn't sure. I'm saying it right, I'm saying it like penis. Penne. Penne, not Penne. Penne. It's a very big difference. But I think we might grab a beer because it's starting to get pretty hot out. Just look at these doors, like, so freaking cool. They even have like the old school kind of knocking. Very cool. grab a water and a beer and one thing to know too we didn't even really think of we're still getting used to it this isn't as big of an issue if you're in a touristy area but you should be aware that probably between the hours of one and four bars restaurants and even shopping they're all gonna close I don't really know what they do maybe they I think they go home take a break they run their errands and stuff like that but don't expect to really do anything between the hours of one and four you'll see probably in most little Italian villages the whole street is just cobblestone it's incredible you gonna buy a tuk-tuk for back home in Canada? Yeah, these would do well in the winter in minus 30. Look at this pathway, it's like something out of a fairy tale. Yeah. I think we are all done in Penne for the day. It's starting to get a little bit too hot. So I think we might head back to my uncle's villa for a little bit and cool off. And then we're gonna go somewhere really, really good for dinner tonight. So quite a few hours have gone by. We just decided to spend most of the remainder of our day just enjoying the pool, taking everything in for our last day here in Italy. And we're, it's about eight o'clock-ish right now. We're gonna head out to dinner. You have to wait so freaking long to go out for dinner. That's one of the more annoying parts about Italy, but it's just kind of the way it is. They always have dinner at least probably eight o'clock every night. But I'm really excited to show you guys this place. It is really, really good. I've been there quite a few times and I'm hoping that they have pizza tonight. Look at that glow. You guys have no idea how excited I am for this. I've barely eaten anything today. Besides that pochetta sandwich, I think we had a bit of chips and some cut up tomatoes today by the pool. That's absolutely it. So I'm probably gonna devour some pizza. I apologize in advance. Welcome to Nuevo, guys. One of my favorite restaurants in Loreto. The inside of Nuevo is absolutely beautiful. And I found it really, really cool that 
you'll see like random medieval weapons and armor just hung up on the walls. You filming? Cheers. Yeah. Cheers to a good trip. Yeah. Yeah. So we ordered a round of antipasti and we each got our own pizza. But it's not North American standards what you'd expect with antipasti. It's basically just whatever the chef has, kind of whatever fresh he has in the kitchen, he'll start giving you. So I'll start showing you guys. It's going to come rounds and rounds of it. So I'll show you guys every round what we're going to get. Starting off with some bread with like some sausage on it. Off on round two. I'm not sure if this looks like a pasta salad kind of thing. I'll probably stay away from that. And now we have seasoned vegetables on bread. So what is that? It's like a mix of vegetables, I think. Oh, there's spicy thing in it. Chilies on there. Yeah. Roasted potatoes. I think these are like kind of like mushroom cows. We're not sure what the green stuff is. I think it's Brussels sprouts, but it tastes very, very good too. And there's a lot of garlic and chilies in it. We got some more green stuff, but apparently this stuff's spicier. So let's give it a go. Yeah, it tastes a lot different, but I wouldn't say it's spicier. That's like onion stew, I guess, sort of thing. And that's the mutton. Like tomatoes. That's mutton. And this one is mutton. That's lamb. Well, the best way I could describe these, it's like a stew, I guess. And they're both really good. We had them last time and they're excellent. And the video doesn't do justice how big these pizzas are, right? <laughs> I got sausage on or sasiche. These are freaking huge pieces. They also have some hot olive oil, picante. They have the Mona Lisa here. I don't know how they got that, but someone's probably looking for that right now. We just finished at Nuevo, completely destroyed my pizza, and there's no better way to finish off the night than to grab some authentic gelato. So we're actually gonna head back to Rico's bar because they have by far the best gelato I've ever had. So these are, no, I don't know, we stock here, but they're, it's different every day you go. What makes a good gelato? Uh, you need to make sure that there's not too much choice, but the classic one here. Like limone, fragola. Needs to be made fresh every day. Fresh every day. Good stuff. Yeah. Top of my face. Fragola and chiaro latte. Strawberry and uh, vanilla. I got pistachio and tiramisu. I generally I get pistachio because it's my favorite pretty easily, and then I try something else because I can't deviate from pistachio because it's so good.